Right now, somewhere in your house, a battery is silently getting weaker. Your phone battery, your inverter battery, your electric vehicle battery, or the battery connected to your solar panels is slowly losing capacity. Even if you are not using it, this is not an accident. This is how chemical batteries are designed to behave. Every charge and discharge slightly damages the internal chemistry. Heat accelerates this damage. Time accelerates it further. And once that damage happens, it cannot be reversed. This is why battery warranties are limited. This is why manufacturers talk about cycles instead of years. This is why a battery that looks perfectly fine on the outside suddenly starts giving half the backup it once did. When it finally dies, you cannot repair it. You cannot refill it. You cannot upgrade it. You throw it away and buy a new one. That is not energy storage. That is energy renting. Now imagine a different idea. Imagine a battery that does not depend on chemistry at all. A battery that does not care about heat, humidity or time. A battery whose capacity remains the same for 50 years exactly as it was on day one. A battery made from ordinary materials that do not degrade, do not burn and do not become hazardous waste. This is not a future invention. This is something you can build today using basic physics by compressing air without a compressor. This energy storage idea gives around 80% efficiency which is insane. The idea of storing energy using compressed air is not new. Engineers have known for over a century that compressed air can store large amounts of energy. The problem has always been efficiency. When air is compressed quickly, its temperature rises sharply. In a typical air compressor, temperatures easily exceed 150 degrees Celsius. That heat is lost to the surroundings and once it escapes, the energy is gone forever. This is known as adiabatic compression. The air is compressed so fast that heat has no time to escape gradually. It builds up instantly and leaks away. In practical systems, more than half of the electrical energy used to compress air is lost as heat. That is why traditional compressed air energy storage never became popular for home use. The losses were simply too high and the machines required constant maintenance. But the failure was not because compressed air is a bad storage medium. The failure was because engineers were compressing air in the wrong way. So here is the genius part. Water absorbs heat. Water is 3000 times better at absorbing heat than air. So instead of using an air compressor, we use water. There is this great news guys. I have this new website www.electrondeals.com. You can see there are so many countries listed for products to buy from Amazon and if not then there is Banggood Worldwide. Here you can see similar products are going to be listed in two pages just like the other countries and if we click on the buy on Amazon link you are going to be redirected directly to that page of the product from where you can buy. You don't have to go and search for the products. Link will be provided in the description. You can check it out. So coming back to the video. Think about those handheld garden sprayers. You know, the ones people use to spray pesticides on plants. You pump the handle, air pressure builds inside, you press a button, water shoots out at high speed. This exact mechanism is what we are building, except way bigger and way smarter. Your lifetime battery has five components. Component number one, the HDPE pipes. You will need five kilometers of 63 millimeter HDPE plastic pipe. This will be laid in your yard in the shape of a radiator heater, sloping downward toward one end where the water drains. The total volume of these pipes is approximately 1500 liters. This is your spring. This is your energy storage. HDPE pipe can easily handle 10 bar pressure. It never corrodes. It never needs maintenance. Even after 50 years buried in wet soil, it will be perfect. Component number two, the surface compression tank. This needs to be a strong steel tank, at least 100 liters in size. Inside this tank, you install one important part, a dip tube. This is a pipe that starts from the top of the tank and goes down toward the bottom, stopping one centimeter above the lowest point. When you open the output valve, water cannot suck air as the dip tube always draws water from the very bottom of the tank. Component number four. Buy a high-pressure multi-stage submersible pump and control sensors to cut off this pump once the tank is full or empty. These pumps have multiple impellers stacked together. Each impeller adds pressure. A five-stage pump can easily reach 10 bar pressure. These pumps cost less than an air compressor and last twice as long. Most importantly, they are silent. Component number five, the Pelton wheel turbine and generator. This water turbine connects to a generator and it is designed for high pressure jets. Water hits the curved buckets on the wheel and bounces off at an angle. This creates maximum torque with minimum water flow. A Pelton wheel is 85 to 90% efficient, much better than air turbines, which are only 30 to 40% efficient because air is slippery and leaks past the blades. So here is how the system works. 
The top end of the HDPE pipe connects the top end of the surface tank and the bottom end of the HDPE pipe connects a small container for collecting the condensed water that accumulates due to multiple compressions and decompressions. Next is the water pump that again connects to the surface of the water tank. Then comes a high pressure extension pipe with one end connected to a nozzle with valve. This nozzle will be placed such that it perfectly points to the cups of the Pelton wheel. The other end of this pipe connects to the top end of this surface tank tip tube. At the moment, all the valves are turned off and there is nothing but air in the surface tank and HDPE pipe. When we turn on the pump, water starts filling up the tank and compressing the air inside the surface tank. This air has nowhere else to go but get compressed inside the HTP pipe. When the water level reaches the top, there is the sensor, which automatically turns off the pump. You can use solar panels to power the water pump. So at this stage, your battery is fully charged. Now slowly open the nozzle until all the air comes out followed by water. The water is going to come out with pressure because the compressed air inside the HTPE pipe is going to act as a powerful spring, thus pushing the water out. Once you see the water coming out, you can adjust the valve according to your electricity requirement. Once the water hits the Pelton wheel, it starts rotating and thus generating electricity. Next, you will need a buck boost module that will be connected to the output of your DC generator for producing stable and fixed output that will ultimately be fed to an inverter for powering your home appliances. Next is a sensor that is connected one centimeter above the bottom end of this dip tube. This sensor is for turning off the output valve to prevent further flow of water outside the tank. This is an optional yet highly recommended step to increase the overall generation capacity. With the help of this step, there is always some water present at the bottom of this tank and the dip tube always remains dipped in it. This process locks the air inside the surface tank and you can add an air compressor to the top of this surface tank with the help of which you can pressurize the air inside the surface tank and the HDP pipe to three bars. After the air gets locked inside, air pump can be removed forever. There is just one last adjustment left which is disconnecting the water pump from the top of the surface tank and connecting it to its bottom below the water level with one-way valve connected to prevent the flow of water from the surface tank back to the pump. This step fixes the water jet pressure to a minimum of three bars even when when your mechanical battery is close to getting fully discharged, thus maximizing the overall power output. Now let's do the math for how much energy we can store. A 100 liter tank with 1500 liters of pipes underground charged to 10 bar pressure stores approximately 20 kilowatt hours of energy. That is enough to power your home for one day during monsoon season when there is no sun. Or you can run a one kilowatt heater for 20 hours straight. Now here is the financial reality. Building this system is going to be comparatively cheaper than a 20 kilowatt hour lithium battery pack. Also, lithium batteries will die in 12 years. You will replace them three times in 50 years. Your mechanical battery costs less and just one time, never again. Over 50 years, your lifetime battery wins financially and environmentally. Also, lithium batteries hate heat. Every 10 degrees of temperature increase cuts their lifespan in half. In hot climates, a battery rated for 10 years might die in 3 years. Owners have to buy air conditioners just to keep batteries cool. Your mechanical battery is buried 2 meters underground. The ground temperature stays constant at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius year round, even if the air temperature hits 48 degrees Celsius above ground. It is naturally cooled forever by the earth. Lithium batteries are affected by humidity. Moisture triggers corrosion in the electronics that manage the battery. This causes short circuits. Your mechanical battery is made of water and plastic. Humidity helps your system. High humidity means more moisture in the air to absorb heat during compression. You are literally using the monsoon season as an advantage. Lithium batteries can experience thermal runaway. Once it starts, you cannot stop it. The battery burns itself from the inside. The cell gets hotter. More chemicals react. It gets hotter still. Total meltdown. Sometimes it explodes. Your mechanical battery cannot catch fire. The worst case scenario is a small pipe leak. Water sprays out, air hisses, you patch the hole with a clamp, it works again. Lithium batteries lose capacity every year. A battery at 100% capacity in year 1 is at 80% capacity in year 10. The storage shrinks, you paid for 20 kilowatt hours but by year 5 you only have 15 kilowatt hours. 
your mechanical battery stores the exact same amount of energy in year 50 as it did in the first year. No degradation. Battery companies would never sell you a mechanical battery that lasts 50 years. Think about it. They need you to buy a new battery every decade. That is the business model. Planned obsolescence. Create a product that wears out, force the customer to buy again. A lifetime mechanical battery destroys this business model. So they will never manufacture it. They will never market it. They will never tell you it exists. That is why you need to build it yourself. Now let's talk about what can happen to this battery after 50 years. The HDPE pipes can develop tiny cracks if the ground moves significantly. But you can fix that by digging up the area and patching it with a coupling. The generator brushes can wear out but the cost is only around $5. The seals on the dip tube can degrade but replacement costs only 55 cents. Lithium batteries cannot be repaired at all. Now here is the crucial part. I put months of research into designing this system. I talked to engineers i studied thermodynamics i crunched the numbers this video is the result but i need your support to keep making videos like this if you found this video valuable please subscribe hit the bell icon and share this video with your friends tell them about the lifetime battery also become a channel member your membership helps me continue researching and creating it's quiz time now so answer this question in the comments if you had to choose between a battery that lasts 15 years and costs four thousand four hundred dollars total or a system that lasts 50 years and costs three thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars total which would you choose and why let me know your thoughts thank you for watching i will see you in the next video